Hi again. In this uh, video of the Razorback screencast, we're going to continue work on the arms now that they've been split into two right here. We're just going to do a uh, hopefully quick uh, merging of these uh, surfaces so that they're nice and smooth, similar to what we did down here with the motor So and over here with this cylinder. So let's get started. Let's waste no time. So we've done this a few times now, and uh, I think you guys are probably getting the hang of it if you've been following along. So um, let's just dive right in. So what we have here is quite uncalculated. You know, I didn't really do, I didn't really spend a lot of um, effort making sure that this cylinder had the right number of segments. It has twelve because uh, a lot of my, a lot of my geometry is 12 sided. I just kind of like that number. So I'm not really sure how this is going to work out, but hopefully it'll be good. So these cylinders and the forearms are both just um, sort of anonymous objects under this hierarchy, and that's good. That's the way we want it. Uh, because of that, we can actually just boolean them together. We don't have to care where the origin of the objects are because they all really depend on this null object that they're connected to. So that's that's what we care about the most. So I'm just going to dive right in and start uh, processing this. So I have a bunch of stuff hidden and I'm going to start with this set. So in order to boolean these together, well, there's a few different ways to do it. We can explore those ways, but I'd prefer to just get down to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is close this off because booleans like solid objects. And then I'm going to move it. Maybe instead of closing it off and moving it, I can just use the line tool with a cut right there and another cut somewhere around here. And I'll replicate those cuts on the other side. So right about there. And another one on the inside so we can cut off the excess stuff. So now we can select both of our, both of our uh, arm objects. And we can just select the geometry on the inside that we isolated. And we can just get rid of it. So that makes it a little bit easier as our geometry doesn't poke all the way through. So we now have these cylinders as well. We need to merge one cylinder with one part of the arm. I'm going to focus on this one first. So if we use a Boolean object and we just put both of these objects into the Boolean, we get some strange results. So they're probably in the wrong order and it needs to be a, a Union B Boolean. We still get strange results. And so the reason we're getting such strange behavior here is uh, that our objects aren't closed. So if we were to close this object with the fill polygon hole and close this object with the fill polygon hole, we're actually going to get a much better result. If I go inside the object now, you can see that we're actually, it's actually, it's kind of difficult to see, but we're actually correctly joining them now. So that's good. We can now look at our boolean and we can see that it's pretty messy, but we may be able to take care of that. Let's create a single object and it's high quality. So I think for now, this is pretty much the most we can ask for. There may be one little thing we can do before, which is to use the knife tool in loop mode and add a cut right here. Um, this is sort of isolating the geometry that the boolean is going to mess up. You see now that the messy edges only go that far. So that should be good. Although I do see an opportunity to rotate the cylinders. Let's rotate these cylinders. Now I have, I have the other cylinder selected as well. Let's rotate these cylinders so that the corner sort of fits to the point like that. And Let's make sure over here it doesn't get too far. So this is an example where I probably didn't do enough preparation, but I think it'll be okay. So 
without wasting time. I'm just going to sort of dive right in. And we now have a single object. It's a messy single object. We can, we can deal with that. So the first thing I'd like to do is to start welding these points together because there's just too many of them. So weld. Let's join those. These can all be joined to one. Uh, we can do the same thing here. And I'm just going to go around determining where the original geometry was. And sort of eliminate all of these points so that they're not getting in the way. So this is no original geometry. But this part is. And we can continue right down here. It's easy to look at this and say, oh, it's so messy. But if you just take it one step at a time, you'll be done with it. Don't get discouraged. So now that we've gone all the way around, we want to go around again and get rid of these unnecessary triangles. And again, I'm just sort of taking it one step at a time. I'm just working on the arm, not working on the cylinder yet. So once we have all those selected, we can just sort of melt them and they go away. And we see that we've left something here. So this was just one I missed. So we can just merge it to there. Now we can do the same thing with the edges down here on the base. Now I'm just going to get rid of all of the edges that are in between the uh, arm and the cylinder. I'm going to carefully calculate which edges get to come back. And this, this may not work out OK. These booleans sometimes have to be done twice. So there we go. Now we have a much cleaner, uh, cleaner setup. And what we can do is we can start off by making one or two connections. So I'm just going to use a knife tool in line mode, visible only. I'm going to make one cut there and another one here. I'm going to try to make them as natural as possible. So down here, I probably don't want to put one because those shoot off at funny angles. And I could probably put one here. So now that we have those connecting edges, um, it should make it a bit easier for us to do this bevel. So we just select this edge right here and we just do a bevel. Let's do zero subdivisions and let's do a nice soft large bevel like that. Even though I know that things down here are getting messed up, we can move those. So now that we have this bevel, we can select these edges that overlapped right here. And this axis is still aligned to our original object, our cylinder, I believe. So we can actually just grab this blue handle and move it in like that. Um, we can probably do something similar right here. Now it's created a bunch of extra geometry for us. We can just come in and select that geometry that it created. And we can melt those edges. Let's go inside of the object, get a better view. See we have some strange polygons here. We can actually just delete those. We'll fill them back in later. So it may have helped if we had a we had the create and gons option turned on, but it's okay. We can just fill these back in. So now we have a smoother transition and we can probably come up here and help that along by just moving this part of the object up. So it's a little bit thinner, but it, it, 
it's it's more respectful to what we're trying to do. It looks like we can actually benefit by moving these out. You know, when things flow so organically as the result of a Boolean operation, it doesn't have to be perfect, and you can really bend the rules. You don't have to stick to the geometry that was given to you. Okay, so we have a smooth transition. It's not properly quadrangulated, and it looks kind of weird at some of these points, but we can take care of those. All we need to do is uh, move things around a bit and try to find a, a nice quadrangulation pattern. So if I select some of these, I can sort of move it around. Okay. So the first thing I see that we could do is shorten this edge. And same thing with these. This seems oddly placed, these edges, so I'm just going to get rid of them. And I like to start at the edges here, the corners, where we know they're good. It looks like we might have some flipped normals. I'm just going to optimize that just to be sure. Looks like a really hard transition right here. I'm wondering if there's some geometry there we're not seeing. No, yeah, it looks fine. Okay, so we're gonna chase after quads. We're probably not gonna get all quads first time around. But let's try. So I'm just trying to keep everything as quads so far. So far, so good. This is the first spot where I get some trouble. So I'm not going to try to keep that as quad. That's going to be a triangle. These can be quads. And I can continue quadrangulating things. This is a this is a very odd situation here. Um, I'm just going to melt all these edges and come at them from the other angle. So Looks like that was that, and this is a triangle here. That's a quad followed by a triangle, followed by another triangle, so that's going to be tricky. I'm not sure what to do there. All right, so the important thing is we don't have any more end gons here. So what we can do is we can select this loop that we made earlier. and scale it up. It's a nice part about it still being cylindrical, circular. So we can scale it up to get it out of the way. And then we can select this next loop of edges we created. And we can use the brush tool in smooth mode, like we've been doing in the past. And we can sort of use this to smooth out the transition. Now sometimes when you use the smooth tool, it chokes the shape and actually makes it smaller than it should be. So if we look right here, we can see it's getting kind of tiny. But what we can do is we can just grab the scale tool and scale it up. As long as it doesn't create any strange geometry, we can scale it up. We can also come in here with the slide tool to slide the points around. So if we slide this point in and then slide this point down, we actually get a better polygon flow. And at first, it's better to slide it along the loop, not slide it back and forth. So that's, that's, that's looking pretty good. We do have this issue of these few triangles left around. I may have a fix for those. So we're just sort of moving these points around until they look a bit more relaxed. And so let's try to get rid of these triangles now. 
So this is a nice situation where I have a bunch of triangles. I might be able to do something with these. Um, so these, I feel like they should just be one point. I know it creates another triangle up there, but I'm okay with that for now. And we can then just do a cut between these two edges and our triangles are gone because we've now converted them into quads. Um, as one of my YouTube commenters pointed out, this is a little bit messy, but uh, in terms of just trying to make everything quads, I think it's a necessary evil. Uh, it's, it's always nice to have an opinion from the other side. It really helps, uh, it helps me reflect on my modeling techniques. There isn't usually anyone around to say, hey, that, that doesn't look good. So when I do get someone saying, hey, that doesn't look good, I'm actually thankful for it. Okay, so I'm just sort of organically moving some of these points around. And we see that we do have one triangle left. We have another triangle over here. But here's the cool thing. We were previously dealing with triangles along this loop. Right here. All the way around. Now because I decided to weld this guy together to make him a quad, on this loop, we actually created a triangle on the loop above. And this is actually a good thing. Because that means now we can select this edge, weld it together, and now we have another triangle on the loop above as well. So if we were to look at this loop, the loop selection is confused now. So if I were to look at this loop by itself now, we can see that we now have two triangles that we can join. And similar to the last time I, I, uh, I upset one of my YouTube commenters, by creating extra geometry here, I can do it again. So I'm just going to use the path mode. And I'm just going to go along like that. There we go. Triangles are gone. Now, again, we do have some geometry that doesn't belong. And it's arguably excess or messy. But we have no triangles. So uh, you got to take the good with the bad, I guess. So now we can uh, smooth it out a little bit more. And these are definitely getting pulled in too much, so I'm just going to forcefully pull them out and scale them away a little bit. And now I can smooth them again. Cool. So I'm going to come in here with my slide tool and manually fix some of this stuff because as, uh, as mentioned before, it doesn't look great doesn't look perfect. It's not a perfect solution. It's sort of a uh, compromise. So I can just bring the flow down to the to the way that I think it should be. I mean every situation is different. In this situation here I didn't really create enough um, enough leeway for myself before I did the boolean operation. So what I'm dealing with here is the typical consequences of doing that. But again, I don't think it's that big a deal. This is just part of modeling, part of having this eye, knowing what geometry is okay, what geometry isn't okay. And you really only develop this by, you know, creating a ton of models and um, criticizing them, having others criticize your work. Critique is really good. It's, it's so necessary and so useful in 3D. So, uh, yeah. So we have, we have quads. We have arguably not great geometry, but I think it'll do for our purposes. I also made an effort to make sure it's on the underside. So it's not that visible. So I'm just using my brush tool again smooth things out. Just gonna scale it up a little bit. Maybe slide it around. This is a really organic joint. Maybe too organic. I'm gonna undo some of that stuff I was just doing.
Okay. So I'm going to select this and just scale it up a little bit. Bring it this way. Scale it up some more. Looks good. So that looks okay. I know it doesn't look great, but it'll do for now. Um, if we wanted to make it look better, we could just add some more geometry and try to smooth it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the final bevel to the edge of this, and then I'm going to do it to the other side of this arm. But I'm not going to actually do a video on that because it's going to be doing the exact same thing, but in reverse order. Not even in reverse order. It's 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 going to be me doing exactly what I just did again from the other side. That's what I meant. So I'm going to stop this recording in a bit and uh, continue modeling that other side. But before I do. I'm going to select this loop of edges right here and bevel them, subdivision of two. If we just hit apply, we should get, oh, it's too big. So we can just bevel it like that. And then I can select these polygons and remove the end gons. And we have right there one side of our arm. Well, it's always kind of strange when you morph a square object into a cylindrical object, but I think we did okay. So I'm going to do it to this side now, and I will see you guys when that's done or in the next video. So until then, see ya.